Good morning, everybody. Let us have a look at the case of this week. A 32 years old man brought by relatives in a conscious state with complaints of headaches since five days. He had a history of giddiness and fall with loss of consciousness for 15 minutes with clonic tonic movements and uprolling of eyes. He also had tongue bite and had been recently detected of hypertension. On MRI, a well-defined lesion measuring 6.3 into 3.6 into 5.5 centimeters was found in the left frontal region with solid cystic component abutting the parts and perilesional edema causing mass effect with effacement of frontal horns of the lateral ventricles and midline chip to the right in the anterior aspect. The flare showed intermediate signal. T2 showed ISO intense, ISO2 hyperintense signals, and T1 had ISO2 hypointense signals. The post contrast study showed intense heterogeneity or heterogeneous enhancement of solid component of the lesion with peripheral enhancement of the cystic component. So the imaging uh, diagnosis was suggestive of cystic metrium. Uh, these are the operative notes. The left frontal craniotomy was done. The tumor was uh, solid cystic and it was completely uh, excised along with the cyst wall and the patient recovered well post-operative. Uh, we received five plots for uh, second opinion and immunohistochemistry to our lab. Uh, the histology slide uh, revealed a tumor with increased vascularity and you can see it resembles angiomatous meningioma. Now the tumor was also compact, patternless with increased vascularity and the blood vessels were slit-like and staghorn appearance and these were lined by flattened endothelial cells. You can see the staghorn appearance and new increased vascularity. Uh, then going to the 10x power, the, we can see that the uh, tumor cells are very monomorphic, round to ovoid, and they are interspersed by these collagen bands. You can appreciate the bands here. And the mitotic activity was low, 2 to 3% hypoxia. Uh, I have already discussed the histology uh, with the images, and this, I'll discuss it in details in the description part. So we did immunohistochemistry. EMA was found negative. This ruled out meningioma. GFAP was not expressed. Glial tumor ruled out. CD34 was positive in the cells. Um, and the nucleus at 6 positivity was very strong. And that confirmed the diagnosis of the solitary fibrous tumor. The MIB1 was uh, proliferation index was low 3 to 4%. So a diagnosis of Solitary fibrous tumor, CNS WHO grade 1 of the left frontal extra -exual. These are the post operative scans given. Now, uh, this is a rare mesenchymal tumor. It was first described as a spindle cell tumor of the pleura uh, by Klempler and Rabin in 1931. Most commonly, it arises in the pleural cavity. However, there are other sites also like orbit, nasal cavities, paranasal sinuses and so on. In CNS, it is rare. Until 1996, uh, it was diagnosed either as a um, fibroblastic meningioma or as a hemangiopericytoma. Later on, uh, Parnero and his group, they described seven cases of meningeal uh, intracranial uh, solitary fibrous tumor and showed that they are morphologically and immunohistochemically distinguished from the fibroblastic meningioma. So, uh, intracranial SFTs, these are poorly recognized tumors and remain a diagnostic challenge. So, immunohistochemistry becomes mandatory for the diagnosis. Uh, now, the terminologies which are uh, no longer recommended are solitary fibrous tumor oblique HPC or hemangiopericytoma. Now we call it solitary fibrous tumor as per CNS 5th um, edition, uh, WHO CNS 5th edition. Now these are mainly dural based when they are supratentorial. The other common sites are skull base, parasagittal and pulsine. 10% uh, may occur in the spine as well. Uh, they are found in 5th to 7th decade most commonly and 
a male is to female ratio is almost the same the genetic hallmark is fusion of nab2 stat6 genes uh, imaging findings uh, on ct it appears as well circumscribed and iso dense to hyper dense compared to the adjacent uh, brain parenchyma calcification and bone erosion may be noted on mri they resemble meningiomas as they are extraaxial well circumscribed masses and they even show the dural uh, uh, the, the dural tail sign on t1 they are typically you know intermediate signal similar to brain on t2 they are iso to hypo intense and they show the heterogeneous heterogeneous signal that is yin yang appearance of the separate areas with low signal and high signal intensity which is very characteristic even angiography can be done where the tumor blush is noted now on imaging the dds are meningioma schwannoma dural primary dural lymphoma and dural metastasis uh, the macroscopy of this lesion is they are usually dural based well circumscribed white to brownish masses they may be infiltrative in nature and may exhibit variable myxoid or hemorrhages may be present so histology these are patternless or haphazardly arranged spindle to ovoid monomorphic cells admixed with highly nice dilated thin walled branching stagon shaped blood vessels they may be hypo to hypercellular or both the phenotypes or multiple phenotypes may exist they may even show papillary or pseudo papillary patterns as well the posi cellular type shows abundant stromal keloid type of collagen the cellular tumors uh, display densely packed round to ovoid cells with little or no intervening stroma and sometimes they may be interspersed with tail zones of foci of necrosis now the nuclei are typically monotonous round to oval then invasion may be found and even engulfment of the blood vessels and the nerves may be present now the typical signs of meningioma that is nuclear pseudo inclusions calcifications and somoma bodies are absent other features such as myxoid stroma uh, presence of giant cells and adipocytic component may be present now there is a variant called as de differentiated or anaplastic solitary fibrous tumor which exhibits conventional areas admixed with foci of pleomorphic sarcoma or osteosarcoma the histological grading is based on the mitotic activity and the tumor necrosis and this has found to correlate with the prognosis so the cns who grade 1 it shows mitosis less than 5 per 10 hyper field for the grade 2 the mitotic activity is more than 5 per 10 hyper field without necrosis and when it's grade 3 the mito the mitosis is more than 5 per 10 hyper field with necrosis Uh, as per cns uh, as per who cns 5 there are essential and desirable criteria so the, in the essential criteria variably cellular tumor composed of spindle to ovoid cells arranged around a branching and a highly nice vasculature and variable stromal collagen deposition and nuclear stat6 expression so these are the essential criteria and in the desirable demonstration of nab2 stat6 gene fusion now differential diagnosis for solitary fibrous tumor is the fibrous meningioma which is ema and uh, somatostatin receptor 2a positive the ewing sarcoma will display cd99 fly1 pat7 and nkx2.2 positivity the monophasic synovial sarcoma is ema and tl1 positive the mesenchymal chondrosarcoma shows cd99 sox9 and on uh, he or the histology it should uh, show presence of high line cartilage and mpnst that is malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor uh, it exhibits uh, focal expression of s100 and sox10 all these tumors are stat6 negative and these are the essential criteria for diagnosis of ewing sarcoma fet ts Uh, fusion is present for uh, monophasic synovial sarcoma uh, gene rearrangement of uh, ss18 by fish analysis needs to be demonstrated and for mesenchymal chondrosarcoma hey1 
uh, NCOA 2A gene fusion should be demonstrated. Now the treatment of choice is surgical resection with supplementary radiotherapy and chemotherapy if necessary. Now this makes it very essential to diagnose it from a meningioma because the treatment uh, varies. Uh, the prognosis and the prediction mainly depends on the histological grade as discussed earlier that is the mitotic activity and the presence of necrosis. Even low-grade solitary fibrous tumors may metastasize. Incomplete surgical resection may lead to recurrence. Thank you for patient listening.